throw. Now the chair recognizes Honorable Salvador Bellaro Jr. Your Honors, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Mr. Chair, before my series of questions, just a short manifestation. I regret that Secretary Dominguez left already. I'd just like to commend him for his colorful language with respect to chalk points and the analogy of chalking by death. I really agree with him because that reflects the assumption of the expansionary policy of this administration as reflected in the Build, Build, Build program. That is why, my dear colleagues, this representation finds it antithetical or rather incongruous that the proposed budget of the president of the administration for 2019 has to be slashed dramatically. I think that this, there is here an inconsistency in policy. Especially because, for example, in education, I noted that there's a dramatic decrease in education depth ed. Right now, we are here witnessing landmark changes in the field of education, especially the pre-college education law. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, you do not just educate citizens overnight. It takes years. And education starts with basic education. It's like a chain. So if you slash basic education, that is not sending the right signals. I think this is a plea also to our economic managers to make a reevaluation of their budget. <clears throat> That's the first point. The second point is that under the Constitution, Congress can only reduce but not increase the recommendation of the Department of Budget. That is why right now the challenge is how to make do with it, given that, you know, as, as we are as the, our economic managers are very well aware of, there are three components of the budget. You have the regular budget, and then you have the special purpose funds and the automatic appropriations. Now, we cannot do anything about automatic appropriations unless there's an enabling law which would calibrate, recalibrate the rules on how to utilize it. That's given. Now, as the regular budget and the special purpose funds, I think that is the concern of these budget hearings. My first question relates to the special purpose funds. The first question is not actually a question, but a request for data. Because I noted that among special purpose funds are miscellaneous personal benefits fund and pension and gratuity fund. And if you go by the benchmark, the parameters that the parameter that it is absorptive capacity, I think these special purpose funds do not and anyway reflect there's a congruence between apples to oranges between utilization and actual use. So I think I would like to request that my office be furnished that data. And this is the question about the special purpose funds. There is rumor going around that the Deng Baksha fund was derived through these special purpose funds. Now this is the question to our economic managers. Do you have any plans, if any, as to how to ensure that these special purpose funds will not be utilized outside their intended purpose? And if any, if that would be reflected in the planning. That is the question. Now, again, in the budget, let me just finish this portion on the budget because I am talking about the reduction in the budget. I noted also, I would like just to take off from the observation of the good Congressman Tevez with respect to savings. I think that was his intent, but he was not able to extrapolate it that much due to limited time, I understand. May this office also be furnished data with respect to savings for the past three years, 2016, 2017, 2018. This question is coming from the point, that the vantage point, that I think there's a ready a recalibration or a change of the definition of savings in the GAA. Because I think non-commencement of a project is included as part of the definition in 2016 in previous years, but not in 2017 or 2018. And corollary to that, I'd also like to ask, is there some sort of transfers to other departments? I'd like to be apprised to which, which departments are these happy beneficiaries of these fund transfers. So that completes my my concerns about the reduction in data. May I, may I be 
may I be indulged with? Uh, I, I understand I will pursue these questions in the, in the budget hearings to the particular committees, but at this point in time, I just need an assurance that this request for data, some sort of a discovery proceedings would be granted. Let me take up the cudgels for Secretary Jokno. He has been bad question, uh, Your Honor. Uh, well, as I've said uh, earlier, the uh, contingencies regarding changes in the exchange rate and uh, inflation, these are factored into our uh, consideration for the budget and also for uh, pl planning purposes. So, in other words, we are protected from this uh, um, unforeseen contingencies. Okay, I think you ask about uh, the drivers of uh, growth that uh, we are con well, that we have uh, in our plan. Uh, on the demand side of the economy, uh, we expect household consumption to be steady at a high rate. Household consumption, that's on the demand side, and then government spending will definitely pick up even more sharply because of uh, public and private construction and uh, the provision of social programs such as the unconditional cash transfer, the CCT, the K-12, the National Health Insurance Program, and the free tertiary education uh, law. A third um, driver would be uh, investment. Investment, uh, public investment, both uh, domestic and uh, foreign direct investment are expected to be uh, uh, growing also quite uh, markedly. And uh, then the l final uh, driver, among other things, is uh, exports. We expect the full implementation of the Export Development Plan 2018 to 2022. Uh, we, uh, th then we expect this can be uh, hastened with the closer ASEAN economic integration and the good prospects for our tourism industry. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, our tourism sector has really been underperforming, and so we can ramp up our tourism industry so that we can increase our services exports. And then on the supply side of the uh, economy, we, uh, the, on the, in terms of the industry, Construction and in infrastructure development, manufacturing resurgence, and spillover to utilities sector reductions in the policy, reductions in policy uncertainty regarding mining. And another one would be uh, the service sector, wholesale and retail trade, uh, transport and communication will benefit from stronger consumption and international and domestic tourism. Uh, the entry of a new telco player, uh, e-commerce, aggressive promotion of emerging tourist destinations, and uh, agriculture sector diversification program of uh, the agriculture sector from too much uh, obsession with rice uh, self-sufficiency towards higher value, va value crops and also infrastructure for agriculture like uh, farm to market roads so those are the uh that those are the drivers we consider in our uh, forecast for G gdp growth between uh, well over the next uh, five or six years thank you secretary thank you uh, thank you sir just one last question brief question mr chair uh, how many seconds uh, a few seconds a few seconds okay Okay. This is a policy question, Your Honors. The free college education law is expected to draw more from the budget in the coming years because you do not educate a person for only for one year. You have to make him finish. Otherwise, it's not free college. It's free undergraduate education. Now, what are your plans, if any, as to how to finance it considering the increase in population in the coming years? Thank you very much. Could I answer that? Uh, let me answer first your, the, uh, your earlier question on the impact of peso depreciation on the budget. Actually, the impact is positive. Okay? For every peso depreciation, the budget deficit will shrink by $7 billion. Why? Because revenues will increase 
because the peso value of the imports will increase. So the tax base will be higher and therefore we will collect more revenues. At the same time, there will be a slight increase in the foreign debt servicing, but our foreign debt now is very small. And then we cannot spend more than what Congress has authorized the executive to spend. So expenditure uh, uh, is more or less constant while revenues will increase so that the net impact of a one peso depreciation is seven billion pesos fall in the deficit, all right? Now on the uh, tertiary education, uh, we, we recognize that, that there will be, uh, so we, we have actually adopted a policy that we will keep the size of the uh, enrollment constant, except for we are allowing for population growth. That will be how we will handle it. So state universities cannot ex expand uh, uh, effortlessly just because they want to expand the enrollment because we have a budget constraint. But we will honor the free tuition uh, policy, Your Honor. Thank you, gentlemen. Congresswoman Amy Diaz.